Hey everybody, Mike King from Profiling Evil. Tonight I had the chance to jump onto Court TV with Vinnie Politan. We were talking about the Daybell case and the two hearings we had this week regarding DNA. Why don't you listen in for a minute and we'll talk after this clip. I'm Vinnie Politan. Thanks so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments on this Friday night. And we've got a full show for you, a full three hours of crime and justice. And we're going to begin with one of the big stories that we've been covering for over a year now. It is tragic on so many levels involving uh, the death of two children, J.J. and Tylee. Their mother, Lori Vallow, uh, married to a man named Chad Daybell. For both of them, not their first marriage, okay? Uh, a lot of people surrounding them have died, including her two children. It is a complicated case in, in involving uh, a web of deceit and lies, um, a cult uh, a doomsday prophet. It, it has so many different levels and layers. It took us months to get to the bottom of this story. But here we are now at Court TV uh, tracking some upcoming trials, plural trials involving these two, but none of them, none of them a murder trial yet. Chanley Painter has the background. September 1st, 2019. Lori Vallow Daybell and her brother Alex Cox moved from Arizona to Rexburg, Idaho with Lori's children, JJ and Tylee. Rexburg is just a few miles from Salem, Idaho, the home of Chad Daybell, her future husband and co-defendant on charges related to her children's disappearances. September 8th. Lori, Alex, JJ, and Tylee go to Yellowstone National Park for the day. Police say this picture is the last verifiable sighting of Tylee alive. Lori had told friend Melanie Gibb that Tylee is taking classes at BYU-Idaho, but records confirm Tylee was never enrolled. September 19th. Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend visit Lori for the weekend. Lori tells Gibb that JJ has become a zombie. Gibb later tells police nothing seems unusual about his behavior. This is the courtyard where JJ is seen on camera playing with neighborhood kids. But in September, according to police, the children would go missing. September 22nd, the last verifiable sighting of JJ by Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend in Lori's home. November 5th, Lori and Chad tie the knot in Hawaii. November 26th, Rexburg police get involved with the search for the kids at the request of police in Gilbert, Arizona. Rexburg police knocked on this door conducting a welfare check requested by JJ Ballow's grandparents. Lori told police that JJ was with a friend in Arizona, but when that story didn't check out, the police returned the next day with a search warrant, only to find Lori and her new husband Chad Daybell were nowhere to be found. December 20th, while Lori and Chad are back in Hawaii, Rexburg police announced JJ and Tylee are officially missing. January 3rd, 2020, authorities execute a search warrant on Chad Daybell's property. March 6th, Lori has her first court appearance in Rexburg on felony desertion charges after being arrested in Hawaii. June 9th, police and the FBI return to Daybell's property and discover human remains in a field behind the home. Later, Chad Daybell is arrested and charged with felony counts of destruction or concealment of evidence. June 13th, authorities confirm the remains belong to JJ and Tylee. Now, this is a, a case where we've gotten bits and pieces of what the evidence is because prosecutors uh, have played it very close and, and there's still an ongoing murder investigation taking place. So they're not showing all their cards to the public and, and at this point not even showing all their cards to the defendants in, in these cases, uh, Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell. Uh, but today, this week... Um, we're getting some more indications of what some of this evidence may be because there was a big hearing involving DNA evidence and DNA testing. Take a listen. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll go on the record now. Let's make sure we have our court reporter. Mr. Fuller, are you there? Very well, thank you. 
This is Fremont County KCR 222755, State of Idaho v. Chad Guy Daybell. Mr. Daybell is represented by his attorney, John Pryor. This is the time we have scheduled for a hearing on the defendant's motions, motion to oppose use of and motion to preserve DNA samples, motion for photographic recording of serology samples and other visual tests, and motion to review lab records. Before we started this hearing, I discussed the matter off the record with counsel, Mr. Pryor and Mr. Wood. The state did file a response to the motion indicating that it didn't entirely object to some of the issues in the motion. Counsel has agreed to try to see if this issue can be resolved through stipulation, and there are some additional issues that we're going to need to find out from the state lab in order to potentially reach a stipulation. And so in order to allow time for that, it's my understanding the parties have agreed that we should continue today's hearing with the proviso that the state would agree to refrain at this time from any consumptive testing of any evidence in its custody at this time. In other words, any testing that would completely consume the evidence, leaving it unavailable for examination by the defense. And then we could bring the case up again or potentially not have to hear the motion on the basis of a stipulation. So that's what I understand we intend to do today. Mr. Pryor, does that recitation I just gave comport with your understanding of where we are today? It does, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood and Ms. Smith. On behalf of the state, are we okay to continue this matter? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Very well. And again, Mr. Wood, as I mentioned, obviously part of that agreement is that the state would refrain from any consumptive testing until this issue is sorted out. Counsel, if you need to have a hearing on this, just contact the court and we can do that potentially even on an expedited basis if necessary. I think that's all we've got for today. Then is there any other issue we need to bring up, Mr. Wood or Ms. Smith from the state? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Pryor, Mr. Means, anything further today? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Thank you. May I be excused? You may. Thanks, Counsel. Like I said, they're not making a lot of stuff very public, but there are also some court filings associated with what you just saw. And we're talking about DNA, and it looks like there's two potential places where this DNA was recovered from. Let's bring in our special guest. Joining us, retired police commander, host of Profiling Evil and the global director for emergency communications and fraud at ESRI, Mike King. He's also the author of Deceived, an investigation memoir of the Zion Society cult. And that word cult plays very large in this case, Mike. Let me start here, Mike, just a big picture. I mean, you, in your career, investigated this cult. You're very familiar with the inner workings on how they do what they do. Looking at this case, we call it the doomsday couple. We called her the doomsday cult mom. What are your thoughts about the cult aspect of the investigation of Chad and Lori Daybell? Well, exactly fits this idea of a destructive cult, a group that comes together and nothing good comes out of it. It's all about the leader, or in this case, Vinny, the leaders. And it's interesting how the doomsday thing and this idea that you can tell all these people who believe in this ideology that they somehow are special and have additional light and knowledge than others kind of keeps them hooked in and keeps them going forward and believing in the philosophy because it makes them just a little bit better than the rest of us. So do you think, and this is an ongoing murder investigation for these two children, Tylee and JJ, no murder charges. I mean, two bodies are found in Chad Daybell's backyard. Do you think, from your knowledge of cults, are there other people that could be associated with Lori and Chad who may know what exactly happened, where the children were taken or where they went or how they died? Because Lori and Chad don't look like one is going to flip on the other. Lori is the mother. She should know where her children are. Chad had a backyard where the children were buried. He should know how two bodies of his stepchildren or future stepchildren, because I think they died before they got married, got buried in his backyard. Would there be other people 
in the cult who might have that information. Yeah, I, th I think it's really possible. Number one, we, we have to look at Alex, who is obviously deceased now. Interestingly, that he dies right after all of this. All of the people around are starting to fall off. I, if they had shared anything with anyone, uh, those people ought to be contacting law enforcement right away because uh, the chances are not too good that you're going to be uh, hanging around in the way this kind of group's going. It's unreal. And you talk about Alex. Alex Cox is Lori's uh, brother. And, you know, his name was linked to a bunch of things. And we know for sure that he killed Lori's brother. I mean, he claimed self-defense. It was never charged. That was an ongoing investigation until he mysteriously died. All right, let's talk yeah, about yeah. this hearing. Let's talk about this hearing right now. Um, DNA from, it looks like, two sources from some of the court filings. Uh, what's your take and, and, and the significance of, of this DNA evidence they were talking about in court? Yeah, I, th I thought Prosecutor Wood really tipped his hand just a little bit here, and it's pretty exciting to see that the, the bench is getting a little stronger. Uh, we, we know that there's blood at least on an apartment somewhere, whose apartment that didn't come out, and on the tools at Daybell's house. So uh, is, is there DNA on the tools that is consistent with Chad and the children? Is it consistent with Alex and the children? Is somebody else uh, their DNA going to pop up on here, and that's where we really start to see this thing start to get bigger and bigger. And and I'm like you, I keep kind of scratching my head, wondering when the other shoe's going to fall, because I don't believe this case is ending with just uh, desecration of children. Right. I, I mean, the children did not die of natural causes. It was not an accident. It was not suicide. Okay. This is homicide, and and someone is yeah. responsible. Like getting back to the, the DNA, the blood that's found in an apartment. Now, we don't know where, and, it, and, and that, that's a big fact, finding out where this blood is from and who the blood belongs to. Um, in this case, there are two key apartments that could be uh, a crucial location if it's associated with this blood, which would be Lori Vallow's apartment and her brother's apartment, which were in that same complex. Yeah, I, I got to agree. Or... or did that somehow end up at a neighbor's apartment transferring somehow, going over to get J.J. when he's out playing with the neighbor kid or something like that? I mean, this thing's really getting interesting. And, and again, I think we're really starting to see the prosecution's bench here. And, and again, those whoever knows something, and I believe there are people, Vinny, that know more, this zombie idea wasn't unique to two or three people. And uh, and those folks ought to be contacting police or looking over their shoulder a whole bunch. Now, are you surprised that uh, Lori and Chad are sitting in jail? Uh, they're in no rush to, to go to trial yet. Um, the doomsday has come and passed. How do you think that's impacted them? The fact that there was a date yeah. last summer that it was all supposed to end. And it didn't. And, and here we are, almost a year past the doomsday, and they're still alive and they're still locked up. You know, I saw that with the Zion Society cult. I saw it with Warren Jeffs and, and uh, in, in actually in many cults, doomsdays come and go. And almost always it's because the followers just weren't worthy enough and uh, the prophet has to step up and say, Man, if you all were just a little more faithful, we could have got there. Now we're going to have to wait for God to tell us the next doomsday. There's always an excuse, right? There's always... Yeah, it's crazy. The, 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 the doom will come back. Uh, we're looking right now at some aerials of where the, the, the children were buried in the backyard. Um, to me, again, we haven't, they haven't been very public with, with all of the evidence here. Just what we can glean from these court appearances and some of the filings made... Uh, by both sides, but I've got to think there's there's a lot of significant evidence there, but if, are you surprised that there's not enough yet where they are confident with murder charges against anyone? You know, I, I'd, I'd love your opinion on this because I keep thinking, number one, maybe, maybe the idea is let's not bring up the murder charges now because they're going to try to make the lower and lesser offenses inclusive and maybe start the clock over, so maybe they want to get evidence locked in and in front of a jury and solid so that the next step along the way, if someone's not available to testify or something, they've got that. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of, or, or frankly, they're just being really systematic and putting an incredible case together.
Yeah, we shall see. Uh, Lori Vallows, she's got a, a trial date uh, this summer for one of her cases, and the other two look like they're pushing it off to next year already. Uh, but Mike King, uh, host of uh, Profiling Evil, check it out on YouTube. Also check out the uh, book, uh, The Investigation Memoir of the Zion Society Cult. Thanks so much on this Friday Thanks, night, Vinny. sir. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I really want to thank Vinny for allowing me to jump in tonight. You know, he had some specific questions about Colt, and he referenced my book, Deceived, an investigative memoir of the Zion Society Colt. You can get it on Amazon or at our, our website at profilingevil.com. But the important thing is we talked about the behaviors of cult leaders. In this case, two cult leaders, Chad and Lori. We talked about the destructive way in which they manipulated those around them. I think you'll find this interesting, and I think you'd really find it interesting to read more in depth about it in the book. Thanks for your support. And did you know that the proceeds from the book are going to help build a new children's justice center and to help in other areas for those who are victimized by predatory child abuse? Thanks a lot, and we'll see you at the next crime scene.